Amen. Amen. All right. Um, I mentioned uh, to the early birds that tonight's session is going to be short. It's going to, it's probably going to be considerably short. Um, I, tonight I really want to spend time uh, answering some questions. I want to spend time uh, challenging you on some things that, um, on some things that you've heard. I want to uh, essentially set this up for our last session on next week. And next week's session is going to is basically be now what? Now that you've got this information, now that you're armed with this, uh, with this, with this information. So what? Now what? So that'll be next week. Uh, this week, this week, um, I tell you what. Let me start with some questions. Aaron, you had a question, so let's uh, start. Let's start with what you had to ask. Uh, hold on, I wrote some notes down. Yeah, great. Uh, it really wasn't a question. Okay. It was, um, so for for the longest time, I had an argument with uh, other black people that one of the reasons why black people was in slavery it was because of our own doing and i know in during roman it talked about the curses and you know with disobedience and things of that nature but you said something last week when i was going over the um last week video yeah that africans uh hello africans traded the negroes to gonzalez I think that was that's who it was. Name. Yep, he was a slaver. Okay, so before then, I used to tell um, many black people that um, we, as Africans or black people, was one of the reasons why um, we was one of the main reasons for the slave trade, and I used to always believe that. Um, Europeans didn't just come to Africa because I was always told Africa was so highly advanced that we, you know, Africans was so much better than the Europeans back then. So I used to always think um, if uh, Africa was so far advanced and way past Europeans, how did the Europeans just come to Africa, take Africans as slaves, and just sell them? So I used to, I came up with the idea that Africans basically gave other Africans or black people gave other black people to Europeans. And you kind of hit on that point um, with when you said Africans gave the Negroes to Gonzalez. So can, can you go over that just a little bit more? I, I, I mean, I, 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 I'm not trying to no, you know, go that's what this is for. Yep, but, you know, I, I used to get criticized because I used to think, I always thought that, you know, uh, Africans or black people gave black people to the Euro Europeans and we are just as guilty or black people are just as guilty of slavery as the white Europeans that took black people as slaves. Am I wrong in, in thinking that or? Well, you are, you are partially correct. So you're not entirely yeah. wrong. Uh, yeah. you're, you're partially correct. Give me a second. I want to share. Oh, no problem. Uh, That's why I want you to kind of go over it just a little bit more. Certainly. So, um, la, 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 la. That was, um, I'm glad uh, Aaron asked. That was kind of the same question that I had. So going back and watching the video from the rabbi and he talked about Africans and African-Americans. Yes. Mm -hmm. and so, so that's where I was confused because you said Africans are actually different from Hebrews, Negro. right? 
Negro. That is correct. Right. Yeah. So, and I'm like, okay, so it's like, what, what people are, is he referring to in his video? So, is what I, so it's kind of like, the mm -hmm. so number one, the, the person in the video receives that word prophetically, uh, although he is largely ignorant of who he is and who the so-called African-American is. The only, okay, reason, the only reason for watching the video was just to show you that God is moving in the hearts and minds of uh, messianic so-called Jews uh, mm -hmm. to, to help them understand or to, or to open the way for their acceptance of who we are as Hebrews. I don't, I don't know if he thinks that we are just part of the Hebrew branch. He kept saying we're the root, et cetera, or that mm -hmm. he's part of the branch, right? So, so um, that part can be a little confusing, but the overall message in the video is that he is acknowledging that uh, black people, uh, and it's only two groups of blacks he's referencing, right? Mm -hmm. Africans and African-Americans. Yep. Right. So he's not uh, he's not referencing any any other black people anywhere else. And so I think that's uh, I think that's interesting that he's doing that uh, because. Um, well, we ran to Africa for because we were trying to escape Roman persecution. So let me let me let me tie that off real quick. The uh, how do we get to Africa? In AD 70, the Roman government began to persecute the Jews. And mm -hmm. the persecution uh, was so widespread. I mean, they were slaughtering, they were, they were crucifying, hanging, killing Jewish people, uh, Jew, Jew, Hebrews, excuse me. Um, and on account of that persecution, the Jews went to a familiar place. That familiar place is Egypt. Egypt has always served as a refuge for the Hebrew people in times of trouble. We see that in Genesis where uh, Jacob sent the boys over to Egypt to get victuals um, when Joseph was second in command. Uh, we see that um, uh, in uh, the Kings and Chronicles where they would, uh, they would go to Egypt or petition Egypt's help whenever they had to go fight a war. Uh, and so this is no different. And, and when you remember how close Egypt is to, to Israel, I mean, they're neighbors, they border each other, right? So it's just a walk, right? It's just a journey down to uh, down to Egypt. Well, what they found when they got to Egypt is that Romans, the, the uh, Roman authority had spread into Egypt. And as a result, they went further into the interior of Africa. Now, not every Jew went to Africa. Some Jews went to India. I may have shared a little bit of that last week. And if I didn't, I'd be glad to show you that, uh, show you that today. Uh, some Jews went to India. Um, and so the reason why they left Israel, uh, those who did leave, because not every Jew was persecuted. You see, some of the Jews were in Rome's pocket, the Sanhedrin, for example, or the body of the, of the religious, uh, the religious <laughs> leaders, the Pharisees, et cetera. They were in the, they were in Rome's pocket and so they didn't have anything, anything, any persecution to escape. So that's why some stayed, some fled, the majority of which fled because this is all post Christ. This is during the time where this new thing called Christianity was going around. And, uh, and, and uh, Saul of Tarsus uh, was a Pharisee who was sent to go and uh, and and capture 
or kill Christians. Now, Saul, on his way to Damascus to execute the instructions that he had gotten from the Sanhedrin, uh, was uh, was knocked to the ground by a bright light, and he recognized that it was the Lord. Saul of Tarsus is Paul, the apostle. And so he was converted and uh, and began to be one of the greatest ambassadors for Christ, uh, having wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. So that's how they got to Africa, okay? And so one of the things about the, about the Hebrew people is they are an agricultural people. So they know how to, they know how to grow food and they know how to raise cattle. This has been, this has been what they've been doing for ages. In fact, when, uh, when Joseph petitioned the Pharaoh for land in Egypt for, uh, for his people and say, hey, let them go, go to Goshen. It was because the Egyptians didn't really care for raising cattle. I mean, they, they liked to eat it, but they didn't want to raise it. And so Goshen was where they sent the, sent the people. The point is, is that they were very good agriculturally. They're agric- agricultural people. So then when we come into an area, well, we just do what we do, right? And so we, we know how to grow food. We know how to raise cattle. And so that's what we did. And we did it so successfully uh, because God was still, God's grace was still upon them that uh, the people, the indigenous people of the area, they didn't like, they didn't like us. They didn't want us there. So let me read over this here. You can see my screen, I trust. Uh, let me scoot this over. Um, bah, 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 bah. So number one, Gonzalez was motivated by, uh, by money. And, mm-hmm. and there was a little bit of slave trading going on. And they happened to be in a place and this and the commodity of trade were, were black people. And so uh, because they were in, because they happened to be in Africa, they said, Hey, listen, why don't we go ahead and capture some black folks too? And so, uh, here we go. I'm reading from this paragraph that's highlighted. While Gonzalez's voyage in 1441 is widely considered to mark the beginnings of the transatlantic slave trade, it may also be viewed as an extinction of an older tradition of raiding and ransom on both shores of the Mediterranean. Upon returning returning to Portugal, Gonzalez treated his captives in accordance with his custom and allowed them to negotiate the terms of their release. Rather than offering a ransom of money, the captives promised to give Gonzalez 10 slaves in exchange for their own freedom and safe passage home. So Gonzalez had captured these folks and had brought them back to Portugal. And apparently there was some sort of uh, tradition of negotiating the terms of their release. And rather than offering uh, Gonzalez uh, and his crew money, uh, they offered Gonzalez other bodies, right? And so, uh, according to the royal chronicler, uh, Zorara, the Berbers explained that these new captives would be, quote, black and not of the lineage of the Moors, but Gentiles. Thus, in 1442, Gonzalez returned his Berber captives to Western Sahara, receiving as payment 10 enslaved sub-Saharan Africans, whom he then transported. Uh, transported back to Portugal for resale. So, uh, Aaron, I don't know if that exactly answers your question, but that's that's how that happened. We went to uh, we went to Africa to escape Roman persecution. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, we, yeah. uh, so we went to a safe place. Let me start off by saying that we went to a safe place to escape Roman persecution. Egypt, because it is a bordering country, is a safe place. It's always been a safe place for Hebrews in times past. Okay. So it just went to, yeah. there, there was a temple in Alexandria, Egypt. There's a temple. Uh, there were Jews who worshiped there already before persecution began. So Egypt was a safe place. They ran to mm-hmm. Egypt 
only to find out at this time that Roman persecution followed them into Egypt. And so they went deeper into the interior of Africa, being in Western uh, West Africa, the sub-Saharan area. And, mm -hmm. you know, and it's it's no accident. And I'm sure you saw the 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 map that I showed last week. You know, it's yeah. it's it's no accident that the uh, uh, cartographers, European cartographers, documented that part of the world, that part of Africa in particular, as Negro Land. Let me yeah. let me let me show you this here. And I'm going to show you different versions of the same map uh, just to give you a better view. Um, let's see here. Let's share this. So uh, this is all this is all the same map. So this stretch of land here, see up top, this is the Sahara Desert. That's why they said that they were sub-Saharan, right? So this is sub or below the Sahara, Negro land, right? Let me show you another version of the of the same map. All right. Um, so the you have along the uh, southwest coast of Africa, you have the uh, slave coast, the gold coast, tooth or ivory coast, right? Uh, here, gold, tooth, uh, I'm sorry, ivory, gold, and the slave coast, right? And then, uh, and then you have some letters written that says KM, that's, an, that's a, an abbreviation of Judah, okay? Uh, or Kingdom of Judah. You see that? Yeah. So yeah. the European cartographers knew exactly who they were getting. They weren't confused. They weren't confused about their, uh, about what they were picking up, all right? Uh-oh. So, uh, so again, that's how we ended up in Africa. And uh, that's why it has long been said, because I've heard it too, Aaron. Well, you, you guys sold your own people into slavery. And that's uh, while the complexion was the same, weren't the same people. Yeah. 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 And they were motivated, the, the, uh, the Hamites, the Africans were motivated by gunpowder and by rum. Yeah, because I, I, I made the same. I used to make the same assumption. Okay, so that's that's how that's why. Did I answer your question? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it, it's pretty much similar to what I thought. I mean, but it is some differences. Like you know, we not the exact same people, but you know, uh, it, it's pretty much how I figured. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. Let let me say this here. Uh, so there was a, a a question, Tanika, that you asked. Maybe someone else asked it as well. Excuse me about being able to trace trace your lineage. Mm -hmm. And while there is, while they don't have Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob's DNA on file, what you can do is this here: if you can trace your lineage to slavery, then it is more likely than not that you are a Hebrew. Okay. If you, and so I've spent the last two years on ancestry.com tracing my own lineage, my, my dad's, my dad's side. Um, and I've gone all the way back, all the way back to, to slavery. Now, I found uh, uh, Ancestry will give you what, what they call uh, hints. And so I got a hint that 
maybe there was a family of Palmers that came from England. Uh, so it's kind of a, I'm, at, I'm still researching that. But mm-hmm. again, if you can trace your, if you can trace your lineage to slavery, then chances are more likely than not, you are a Hebrew. Uh, I, I don't know if, uh, yeah, y'all are still on. Great. Yeah, so, my cousin is doing our family tree. Uh-huh. And so, um, and what was crazy is that I'm trying to look for, we have like a whole file um, while you're talking, but um, she reached out to, apparently we have <laughs> uh, some white people that owned us maybe, <laughs> or were a part of our family. And she reached out to them and they got upset and uh, she shared the email. Uh, but I'm gonna go back and look, but I'm, I'm pretty sure <laughs> because we're going through, even though um, my, my mom and her mom are sisters and she's doing her dad's side, I will at least know my maternal side. Right. And then I want to trace my, um, well, my, my granny side, then I have my grandfather's side that we're doing research on. And then I have my father's lineage too. So, but I'm pretty sure no, yeah, we're on there. Okay. So, it. so, so let me, let me say one other something about, Hey, Jerry. Um, thanks for joining. The slaves adopted the name of their slaver, right? So mm-hmm. Palmer is, uh, is, is likely the name of a family of slavers, right? Uh, Smith, Wilson, Campbell, Ashley, right? White, right? And 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 let me say this here: so are so are names like Gonzalez, uh, uh, and other what has been traditionally called Hispanic names. And here's why. Let me refer you back to this document that we read last week and the name of the slaver. What was his name again? Gonzalez. Gonzalez. And Gonzalez was a what? Black. He was a European. Well, he, he, was, he was Portuguese. Do you know that the majority of slaves that left the slave coast went to um, went to Mexico, Central, and South America. Mm-hmm. The slavers there were Europeans, and they had names like Gonzalez and uh, and and other what we commonly think of as Hispanic names. Mm-hmm. Wow, they were not mm-hmm. Hispanic. Mm-hmm. They were European. So this also includes our our brown sisters and brothers. Uh, The reality is, is that uh, you have your name because of the slave community that you were part of. If you were part of, uh, of, uh, if, and I'm drawing a blank tonight, guys, this is so weird. Uh, I can't think of a lot of, uh, a lot of Hispanic, common Hispanic last names. Um, okay. or Hispanic, Hispanic so-called last names. Martinez. Um, a lot of my friends, Rodriguez, Lopez. Yes, Martinez, Rodriguez. Lopez, Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Those Lewis. are European names. Yeah, I got a lot Lewis. of my friends. Lewis. European. Lewis. Yes, sir. If if they name in with an S, it's Hispanic. <laughs> right. Or G, Z, and S. Yeah. yeah. So we'll we'll, we'll let the resident we'll let the resident. Latinos uh, <laughs> speak for the name, but I understand what your point is. But my, well, what I'm saying is that those yeah. names are not are Hispanic. not uh, Hispanic, Spanish, South American, Brazilian, Central American. They're not. They're European. They're Spanish, <clears throat> they're Spanish generally from the Iberian Peninsula, Spanish. which is where Spain is. Okay, Spanish in the sense of Spain. Right, and, and that that in other words, they're Iberic names, <clears throat> basically, and that was part of Europe, and that's part of Europe. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah. 
And so, Lewis, I want to share this part. So this was part of our um, ancestry.com. Okay. So which I probably need to look this look this up. So um, I guess it's Cameroon, Congo, and Western Bantu peoples, 29 percent. Nigeria, 24 percent. Benin and Tog- Togo, 15 percent. Mali, 12 percent. Ivory Coast and Ghana, 8 percent. And in England and Northwestern Europe, 4 percent. Scotland, uh, single, as I said, Wales, and then indigenous, indigenous America North. So you mentioned the majority of your, of that bloodline that you mentioned are all places it's, where there were Hebrew people. Ghana, okay, which so in 2019 welcomed all so-called African-Americans back to Africa. Ghana is where the slave coast actually is. Uh, uh, Bantu. When you showed on that map, when you said Ivory Coast, right? Yeah. Um, slash Gold Coast, I think you said. Yeah. So yeah, Ivory Coast and Ghana. Yeah. Mali, Benin and Togo, 24% Nigerian. And then Cameron, Cameron, I guess Congo Cameroon. and Western Bantu peoples. Cameroon. Cameroon. Yeah, Bantu. Congo and Western Bantu peoples. Yes. Those are, those okay. are areas where Hebrew people settled. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to have to find our family tree. It's just interesting to me. Yeah. It's just like, wow. Okay. So, um, so yeah, I just wanted to, just to bring that out that our common, our common, I know that it may sound like I've spent a lot of time talking about, um, about blacks specifically, but I, I, I wanted to, make sure that I looped in our, uh, uh, our brown brothers and sisters as well. Uh, we have our uh, so-called African-American has their last name by virtue of uh, being part of a slave community, a slave family. And so does, so does our uh, Spanish speaking brethren as well. All right, are there, are there any other questions? Oh, Lewis. Yes, sir. Does that mean I'm not actually related to Kanye? <laughs> Facts, Jerry. Sorry. Jerry you no, know I had to no, thank that. you for bringing it up. That's a great question. No, you are <laughs> not. <laughs> hey, Lewis, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, I just wanted a clarification, make sure I got it right. Um, when you were showing us like wordsmith or how, they, how words change, I think you said something about Hebrew moved to Ibu, and then that's how we got Negro. Yes, I hear you as your phone is breaking something up. About those mm-hmm. words You're breaking up a lot, Ms. Harris. Uh huh. Oh, okay. I, I got. I got. Oh, the- okay. I got the gist of what you were saying. Sorry about that. Um, I'm on the road. Um, about heat. Okay. Okay. Am I right? Yes. Um, I didn't take a note for that last week. There's a there's a twelve volume book that I have to breeze through to find to find, because uh, I don't think I've highlighted that one, the etymology of Negro. Uh, Negro comes from uh, e- Ebo, or Igbo, or, or, or Hebo, and then Hebrew. And that is, uh, that is how the locals pronounce the word Hebrew there in that area. Um, uh, etymology, but I will get that etymology of uh, Negro. Great question. Uh, any anybody else questions? It's seven forty. I said it was going to be short, and so let me let me show you something. I want to I want to just walk us through a few passages of scripture. And this, no doubt, will drum up some more questions. 
All right. And here we go. So I've been really giving a lot of thought to the why question, the why does it, if this, is this is big enough for everyone? Uh, why does this matter? And I know we've answered why on several occasions, but I want to I wanna give you some more why. Um, in John 4, 23, the Lord says, but the hour comes and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father seeketh such to worship him. I'll repeat that again. When the true worshipers shall worship the Father, not just in spirit, speaking in tongues and casting out devils, etc., but also in truth. And you see, the father is seeking persons, those such persons to worship him, to worship him. John said, uh, Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, I am the truth and the life. No man comes to the father, but by me. So Jesus is the truth. So you can't come to the Father unless you accept the truth. In John 17, 17, he says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay. So you have Jesus, who is the word, who is truth. Okay. First John 2, 21, he says, uh, John says, I have written, I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it and that no lie is of the truth, okay? So the Lord, the Father is seeking folks to worship him, not only in spirit, but in truth. The only way to worship in truth is to accept, the uh, only way to worship the Father is to worship in truth. You have to accept Christ and Christ is the truth, okay? The word is the truth and that's how you can be sanctified. You cannot be sanctified any other way apart from the truth, okay? And no lie is of the truth. So what is truth? Truth is the body of real things, events, and facts. The truth, the state of being the case, often capitalized, a transcendent, fundamental, or spiritual reality, the body of true statements and propositions. Why does this matter? Because to not believe this is to believe a lie. To not believe this is to, let me say it another way. To not believe this is to deny the Lord. The Lord, Jesus, is what? Truth. And if you deny the truth, then you are denying Christ. So Jesus says, uh, if, you, if you are ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. Okay? This is why this matters. Because this is the truth. So what's a lie? A lie is an assertion of something known or believed by the speaker or writer to be untrue. And I think we have demonstrated, I'll read that again, an assertion of something known or believed by the speaker or writer to be untrue with the intent to deceive. Okay. He told a lie to avoid punishment. We know what a lie is. An untrue or inaccurate statement that may or may not be believed true by the speaker or writer. The lies we tell ourselves to feel better. Historical records contain numerous lies. Something that, mis that misleads or deceives. Now, when you contrast truth to a lie, you have Christ on the one hand. Well, guess who you have on the other hand? You guessed it, the devil. Ye are your father, the, the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. John 8, 44. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks, he, when he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. Yes. An assertion of something known or believed by the speaker or writer to be untrue with the intent to deceive. I've I've shown you documentation uh, from, from writers in the past 
who have told the truth about who Hebrew people are, who have told the truth about the folks they were capturing and slavery. But today, we have wrapped our minds around this lie. One of the questions that was asked, uh, I, I, gave, I think I gave you guys about five questions. And one of the questions was, do you think that there is a worldwide conspiracy, not conspiracy, I use the word conspiracy, a worldwide deception and that you are part of it? If you cannot come to terms, as you wrestle with this understanding, as you wrestle with this information, uh, and you can't come to terms about what this is, then you, uh, you are denying Jesus. Now, this is not me. This is not Lewis. Say, I would never tell you guys that. I love you guys. I would never tell you that. But the scripture is telling you that. Of course, I would tell you that. If you, I'm telling you that right now. Uh, if you deny the <laughs> truth, you are denying Jesus. I don't care. I don't care who told you. I don't care. I don't care who said it. Hold on. Okay. Let me show you some. Let me show you something. Let's show you this here. Uh, when you pray, is, is this what you see? No. When you pray? Mm -mm. No. So the person on the person on the left, his name is Cesare Borgia. Cesare Borgia is the illegitimate son of Pope Alexander V. Pope Alexander V was a contemporary, lived in contemporary times with Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci. And when they wanted to make the likeness of Jesus, it is said, although it may not be true, but it is said that they use Cesare's likeness as the likeness of Christ. No lie is of the truth. Hold on, I got some more pictures to show you. Uh, no lie is of the truth. Mm -hmm. I, I think, Louis, the crazy part about it is um, our unlearning. So regardless, you know, where you are in age in your life, whether you're 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and unlearning those images that have been attached, that you've seen, that you've had on your walls, that were on your grand grandmother's, you know, in their rooms, and unattaching and unlearning those things. It's, yeah. like, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. How about this one? Mm -hmm. Does this guy look familiar to y'all? Maybe. Let's let's mm -hmm. let's read let's read a passage of scripture. Let's read a passage of scripture. Give me a sec. Get my Bible over here. Can I, I, Who's speaking? Uh, me. Hey, can I read one real what, quick? Go uh, ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so Revelation chapter one. Man, let me two. read my notes, bruh. Let me read my notes. <laughs> Get out of my notes, man. <laughs> I tell you what. Go ahead. You, All right. Go ahead. You, you go. You go ahead. You go ahead and you start reading. And I'm going to share my screen. In uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 15, it says, And Jesus' feet is like fine brass as it were burnt in the furnace. So, I mean, if you Google what brass look like. Hey, I got one better for you, brother. I got pictures uh, of fine my, brass. My bad. My bad. My I, got, bad. I got pictures of burned brass. Come on, man. Hold on. Let me share this. <laughs> I'm just I'm just gonna share my whole desktop because you it's gonna be a lot of stuff to go through. Let's just share uh let's share where's the desktop? Okay, never mind. I actually told this verse to a white person who told me who asked me how I know Jesus isn't white. And I basically quoted Can y'all see my screen? Yes. Y'all know what those are? Bullets. Shells, bullets. Bullet casing. <clears throat> casing. Casing. What are they made of? Brass. Brass. And what's that dark? Why is that dark part at the top 
Uh, the powder. It's burnt, it's burnt it's glass. It's burnt. After it's been shot. It's burnt. Hold on. I got some more pictures. Uh, how about this? How about how about that picture? That's kind of, but that's mm -hmm. brass that's been mm -hmm. burned. Mm -hmm. Okay. More brass that's been burned. Brass that's been burned. Brass that's been burned. Okay. Brass that's been burned. Right? So uh, the reality is, is that burned brass has a very distinct color. And that's, that was what Jesus looked like. Now we're talking about truth and lies. What? Truth and lies. So, uh, and I'll admit, I used to pray and uh, Chester A. Borgia's image would appear in my mm -hmm. mind. Because that's the image that I, that I grew up with. Mm -hmm. That's the only image that I knew. And so when I prayed, that's the image that showed up. Mm -hmm. Right now, um, Aaron, you read you read the passage in uh, in Revelation. I want to draw your attention to a passage of scripture in uh, in Daniel. Okay. So in uh, in Daniel chapter seven, verse nine. Let me get there, Daniel. Seven, nine. Okay, let me share this again. Uh, Daniel says, I beheld, he's having a vision of the last days. He says, I beheld, in verse nine, till thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure, like pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. Now in Revelation, it said that his hair was white like wool. In Daniel, it says that his hair was like wool, not just the color, but the consistency. So I don't know if you got ice array sheet, by the way. Uh, and uh, wool has a very distinct texture. Uh, give me a sec. Give me a sec. I'm going to show you all some pictures. Uh, here we go. So this is a close-up picture of wool. Y'all see that? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. here's, here's some more wool. Look at that wool. Right. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. uh, how about that? A little closer. Yep. Yep. What, mm -hmm. what about what about that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, so hair hair like wool, hair that had the consistency of wool, hair that had the characteristics of wool. Right. So hair like wool. He had, he had feet that were, that were like burned brass and hair like wool. What do y'all think about that? Sound like he was black. Sound like he was black to me. So um, in this same vein, I want to show you, uh, I think I did. Let me see if I'm ready for that yet. Okay, yeah, let me, let me share this. Does this make sense to everybody? Yes. In uh, the book of Revelation, uh, John speaking, he says, blessed are they that do his commandments, his Christ commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Why is that, John? Well, for without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loves and makes a lie. Again, a lie is to make an untrue statement with the intent to deceive. 
to create a false or misleading impression. This is why this is important. You're either a lover of truth and thereby a lover of Christ, or you're not. Or you're not. There's no, there's no two ways about it. Uh, one more set of scriptures, and I mentioned uh, to those who came on a little later that tonight's study was going to be uh, was going to be very short. That next week we're going to uh, we're going to talk about uh, what now. All right, all right. If you will, turn in your Bibles if uh, to the book of Luke, verse number of chapter number uh, three, verse twenty-three. I'll have it here on the screen. Uh, when when I look at the pictures of my grandfather, guess what? I look just like him. I mean, we we don't have exact features, but we have similar characteristics. When I look at the pictures of my uh, grandfather's grandfather, guess what? Same thing. Similar characteristics. Similar features. And Jesus in verse 23 himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as we suppose the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli, the son of Matthat, the son of Levi, the son of uh, Melchi, the son of Jana, the son of Joseph, uh, the son of Matthias, the son of Amos, the son of Nahum, the son of uh, Esli, the son of uh, Nagi, the son of uh, Math, the son of Matthias, the son of Simei, the son of Joseph, the son of Judah, the son of Joanna, uh, uh, the son of Risha, the son of uh, Zerubbabel, the son of Salathiel, the son of Neri, the son of Melchi, the son of Adai, the son of Kazim, the son of uh, Elmodom, the son of Ur, the son of Jose, the son of Eleazar, the son of Joram, the son of Mathat, the son of Levi, which was the son of Simeon, the son of Judah, the son of Joseph, the son of Jonah, the son of uh, Eliakim, which is the son of uh, uh, Malia, the son of Menon, the son of uh, Mathat, the son of Nathan, the son of David, which is the son of Jesse, the son of Obed, the son of Boaz, which is the son of Salmon, the son of Naasin, which is the son of Amenadab, which is the son of uh, Aram, which is the son of Ezram, which is the son of Phares, which is the son of Judah which is the son of Jacob, which is the son of Isaac, which is the son of Abraham, which is the son of Terah, the son of Nacor, the son of Surak, the son of Ragu, the son of uh, Phalak, the son of Heber, the son of Selah, the son of Cainan, the son of Arphaxad, the son of Sem, or Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech, the son of Methuselah, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of uh, Malilil, the son of Cainan, the son of Enos, the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. If I look like my great, great grandpappy, guess who Jesus' great, great, great grandfather looks like? Burn brass and woolly hair. Lewis. Yes. The Bible says to God, there's no respect of person. Amen. So why did he make all these different color people people to have all these difficulties adjusting to who is good and who's bad and who's ugly and who's this? Why didn't God make all of us alike? So um, I'm going to try to explain it this the way. Climate I know the climates and all that has something to do with it. Okay. Okay. So when, when we started off this series, we discovered that the majority of the characters in the Bible, regardless of whether or not they're children of Abraham, uh, share similar complexion. So, so there's a bunch of similar complected people as you go through the pages of scripture. That's not to say that there weren't 
people whose complexion was dissimilar uh, than Hamites and Shemites, because there were, they just don't appear on the pages of scripture. Okay. Now, uh, as Japheth, who is the father of the Gentiles, Genesis 10, verse five, uh, that's the truth. Uh, as Japheth moved north from, uh, from Ararat, where the ark landed, he is the, he, he, uh, that climate, as you mentioned, is very much different than the climate that is south of Ararat in the Arabia and African areas, respectively. And so, and so that is how the different complexions began to be. There is also this other way the complexion showed up, and it was called leprosy. Now, typically, when we think of leprosy, we think of some skin rotting disease. And yes, leprosy can rot the skin. There is a form of leprosy that does that. But there is also a form of leprosy that does not do that. Hold on. If you'll give me a second, I will show you some of those forms of leprosy. People who are uh, people who are leprous uh, by the by the actual definition of the word. Let me make sure I can do that. Yep. Uh, people who are leprous. Can I scroll? Yeah, I can. Cool. Uh, so we are familiar, or get uh, not familiar as much as we understand that there is photos, that there is the skin uh, disease of leprosy, right? We know that. But guess what? Guess what that is? It's on the tip of your tongue. Leprosy. Leprosy. Yeah. What about that? What you reckon that is? I didn't know that. No. How about how about that? Leprosy. Yeah. My grandfather had that condition. Okay. How about this right here? Is that leprosy? Albino. Albinoism. The answer is yes. So in Leviticus, it talks about a person whose whole body was white, uh, whose whole whose whole body was every one of the pictures, except for the first picture is unclean. Every picture after that was clean. That's clean leprosy. No boil, no red spots, no skin disfiguration. That's all leprosy. And that's in your Bible. Mm hmm. Well, the one that. The further you move away from the equator, the lighter you get. So as those people groups, the further you go away from the equator, like Zula said, north, um, your complexion changes. And not only that, the features, like um, if you're in the mountainous areas, the people, their noses got more uh, uh, narrow. Um, the, the closer you are to the equator, the noses get wider. Wa wider. Yeah. The reason why that happens, Pastor, is because God has designed the body in such a way that the nostrils, the old factory, old fact, old factory system, nose, nasal, it takes in air. When it's not only to extract oxygen to feed into the blood system, but it also is to cool off the skull. If you're in a warm climate, you need wider nostrils so that you can get more air so you can cool the skull. If you're in a colder climate, you need a narrower uh, nostril because you don't need as much to keep the skull cooled. Hmm. It's all for well, a reason. Where, where, where was Mary? Why, why did he make Jesus black? Where was Mary? What, where was she? Well, uh, so that's a great question. I think I, think I know what you're asking. So lineage is determined by the father. Lineage is not determined by the mother. Okay. Lineage in scripture is determined by the father. If your daddy was, so are you. That's how lineage is determined in scripture. Um, Ms. Wanda, also last week we discussed the fact that race wasn't even an issue, um, the different color uh, wasn't mm -hmm. even an issue before the 15th century when uh, when Pope uh, uh, Pope Nicholas V made race brought race to the forefront. If you're not if you don't look like like us white Christians, 
because all, all white folks are Christians. Uh, and if you don't look like us, then they're bar barbarians, they're pagans, uh, so this, they're, they're, and they, they need to go over there and take all their stuff, take it all, possess it yourself, and put those people into perpetual slavery. Mm. Hey, let me share this with y'all. So, uh, so a couple of things. Um, Adam, uh, Adon, and I had a, had a conversation, um, and I thought, am I okay with sharing just a little bit of that, that little conversation you had, the question that you had? I'm okay with that. Okay. He, he asked a question, uh, and this was offline. He said, Pastor, I just, a question when you said that they intentionally knew that, um, that they would intentionally withhold the truth uh, from us. And, um, and I said, well, I said, here's what I will say. There are some theologian people. They definitely knew there are some historical people and some political people. They definitely knew. I said, but there's a lot of good white people. But so let me say this. There's some good white people, good white brothers and sisters. Oh, absolutely. That they're, that they're just out there preaching. And and they um, they don't know, just like some of us might not have known. Ignorant. They just, I was they ignorant. Just, just ignorant and they're just out there preaching and there's some good, some really good people. Um, but if you have gone, um, and then he asked the question, he said, uh, you know, my, his dad recently, I believe got his, his, uh, doctorate, um, in seminary. And he said, did my dad, did they teach this in seminary? I said, no, they, they don't teach this in seminary. They don't, um, and there's a reason for that. You know, they, they don't teach, they don't go deep like this uh, in seminary. And so this is stuff that is truth that's hidden in plain sight. Um, there's a reason why. So two things. So Matt Chandler, the village, uh, the village church, um, he, he likes this app called Dwell. Have y'all heard of the app Dwell? I like the app. It's, it's a Bible reading app called Dwell. Okay. And, um, and Matt said that he specifically likes that when he reads Dwell or listens to Dwell, he prefers to listen to it in, you can choose a character, like a voice, like you can choose like different people to read the Bible in their voice. Okay. Um, he prefers this character called Felix. And, and so me being me, I just wanted to know, who what is Felix? Sound like, right. <laughs> what Felix sound like? And Matt Chandler is, uh, you know, he's a, well, you know, a, a young um, seminarian and uh, has built quite a ministry. This is Felix. And so, from the day we had, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, truly pleasing to me, bearing fruit in every good work and embracing the knowledge of God. You may not be able to hear that very well, but Felix is uh, Felix is African. Uh, African. <laughs> Felix is African. And Matt says he only wants to look <laughs> So, so, and as I began to meditate over this past week, week and a half, I just, I just wanted to hear Felix read scripture to me. And I want you to know that it, um, it came alive to me differently than it has in the past. Wow. And that app is called Dwell, D-W-E-L-L? -L? It's called Dwell, D-W-E-L-L, -L, Dwell. And, uh, I mean, you can choose different musics. You, you can choose, if you want a European reading the Bible too, you can't. But I just thought, I found it interesting that, that Matt specifically said, he, he just wants to hear dwell. Now, going back to the conversation I had with uh, Adam, he said, Pastor, is it it's so there are some good white people. So I want you to know that you you have you know, some good white people. Each of us know some really good white people that love the Lord with all their heart. Absolutely. And they're just trying they're just trying to do the best can. Absolutely. And uh, but there are some that that no, clearly know the truth. And they don't even go as far as as uh, there are some that will try to explain away the hair like wool and the feet like 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 burnt brass. And and they'll try to explain away, you know, just the ge ge geographical uh, realities. 
But then there are others who don't even want to go there because they know that if they start trying to go there, that they're telling a lie. But the example that I gave to Adon is um, I, we might have mentioned this, mentioned it in previous um, lecture series uh, classes. The Slave Bible. Are you all familiar with the Slave Bible? By term, I've never seen one. I'd like to get one. OK, so I, I so I I went to. D.C., um, I visited the, the Museum of the Bible three times, uh, twice with my wife, and um, there is, there, there's a slave Bible. And the slave Bible, I sent Adon an article on the slave Bible. The slave Bible was created, initially I thought the slave Bible was created to, for, for the sole purpose of um, removing from Scripture anything that would would stimulate an uprising in the slaves, right? So if you if the slave Bible is an actual Bible, they took out anything in the Old and New Testament that references, um, you know, the slaves being free from Egypt. They took out um, any references to um, in Scripture where it says that we're all the same, um, that, that, you know, that things of that nature, they took out anything that would point to equality, anything that would point to, um, anything that would stimulate the slaves. Now I thought initially that it was the sole purpose of, of, uh, maintaining a stronghold of the slave trade. But as, after I thought about it, quite frankly, after I got off the call with, uh, Adon, the motivation might've been uh, even more, um, diabolical. Mm. And, and that is, if they knew who we were, uh, what better way to erase um, written and oral uh, to traditions that were passed down from generation to generation than to strike it from um, the, the Bible? Because if, if we were to have read it, that light bulb probably would have come on to say, this is who we are. Right. And so the slave Bible is a real thing. And so it goes back to that. Did they intentionally know? Did they intentionally withhold this information? Well, they published a whole Bible and they intentionally removed certain aspects of the Bible in the old and the new Testament. Um, that is as, as that is. So that made that truth a lie. As Lewis said, that made the truth of the word of God a lie. And they published a lie and they distributed a lie for the purpose of ma maintaining that lie. Mm -hmm. Now, who is now? Who is they? They they are probably all dead now. Mm -hmm. OK, but um, there are people that that know the truth. And um, and so, you know, I, I just think. God is God is dealing with with with. Um, the world right now as it relates to all of this and uh there's things unfolding right now that only god could do so um y'all stay tuned and keep your seatbelt the seat seatbelts fastened because i believe god is moving right now on the earth Amen. even if, if, even if, as it relates to the ncaa the ruling of the ncaa that you know now these athletes can be they should they should have been compensated for years in some way shape or form because it was a, it was really a legalized form of slavery, quite frankly. Um, just it's even the NCAA, you know, they were making trillions of dollars off of these primarily black athletes, right? Their names, their images. And the only people at the top that got rich were the executives at the NCAA level and the coaches, which were primarily white. But uh, the Supreme Court ruled today that that never should have been. And so um, I, I believe there's a shift, man. There, I believe there's a shift. And, 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 and God, is, um, God is turning things um, in the favor, I believe, of, of his people. And so, and again, this isn't some black power trip thing, but this is, this is what, where we're driven, Lewis and I, we're driven to expose the truth. Y'all, we got, we, and, and because we're, if we're found in the place of truth, we're in a safe place. If we're found in the place of, of lies, um, we're, we're, in a, we're in an unsafe place. So, um, anyway. 
just to add some clarity to that, uh, it is us and them, but us is righteousness versus unrighteousness. So it's not, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. So it's not people against people. Right. It's the devil. Who is the father of lies? Satan. Satan, Satan is the father of lies. Yes. If there is a lie, it came from Satan. Mm-hmm. Regardless of what color of the skin or complexity of the skin, the person who said the lie, it's a lie. Mm-hmm. Regardless. Right. All right. And so it is. this is not white versus black or black power. Or, this is reverse racism. None of that. Mm-hmm. None, none of that. None of that. Some colorful adjectives come to mind, but none of that. None of that. Right. We are ambassadors for Christ. We have a mandate to spread the truth. And it doesn't matter where the truth is found. If it's the truth, it's the truth. We have a response. We have all of our lives been fed lies, lie after lie. And we've built up. Uh, value systems and we've built up ideology and we built up these uh, this framework of thinking in our mind based on lies and what happens when you turn a light on in a dark room the darkness immediately flees right so but mm-hmm. in humans we have a struggle scripture says thy word is truth so we have a struggle whenever the illuminating word uh, whenever the word illuminates in our life filled mind, we have to we have we wrestle against that. We struggle with that, and and we build all kinds of other straw man arguments about about what we're wrestling with. When really it's just the Most High trying to sweep sweep the floor of our mind of the lies that we have been that we believed. Uh, mm-hmm. Romans chapter twelve says. Uh, uh, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes. Mind renewal is not overnight. Mind mm-hmm. renewal also is not easy. It it's doesn't a work feel in good. Progress. It's always mm-hmm. a work in progress, Mother Wanda. You know, yes. I'm reminded of the tree uh, that uh, that uh, that had uh, poor, poorly developed fruit, and what uh, what Jesus had to do was cut off part of the tree. Guess what you are. You are a tree mm-hmm. and God has, God has uh, decided that in, in your life, there are some branches he wants to cut off. Mm-hmm. Does that feel good nope. to the tree? Certainly not. Mm-mm. But guess what happens when you start pruning those branches and that poorly developed fruit, the next season will have very well developed fruit. It's not for no reason. Satan is the father of lies. Jesus is the truth. To deny truth is to deny Jesus. And like Jesus says, if you deny me before man, I'll deny you before my father. Mm -hmm. That's all I got tonight, guys. Very good. I just want to give kudos to you, Lewis. Um, So some of these names in the Bible, (laughs) you are flawless at them. (laughs) So each and every week, you, I'm like, wow, okay. So I just want to give you kudos to that. Thanks, nice, Lord. Thank you. Thank Very you. Very good. <laughs> Any other questions? Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Thank you. Praise the Lord. All right. Uh, well, Pastor Don, will you close us in prayer? Mm, yes, sir. <laughs>